Hey guys, my name is Z, and you're watching the Miss It Easy. Hey, welcome to the playlist design technology and Timbus content. And today we have 7.2 of Timber specific content, which is sources of timber. And by the end of the lesson, you should be able to describe 7.2.1 hardwoods, natural timbers, adding onto the, um, the core content. 7.2.2 natural timbers, softwoods. 7.2.3 which is manufactured timber. 7.2.4 which includes the sources of origins. 7.2.5 which is the physical characteristics of each timber. 7.2.6 which is the, work, the working properties, which I've already covered in the core content as well. So check out the description if you haven't checked it already, but I'll still cover it again. And 7.2.7 .7, which is social footprint. And 7.2.8 which is ecological footprint. So check out the pain comment for all the timestamps. But we'll move on now to 7.2.1, uh, hardwood. And I've covered most of these woods, like topic 1, topic 1, in my core content video. So if you haven't checked out already, check out the description or up here. But we'll start out with oak, which is a moderate brown color with a unique and attractive green markings. Advantage is that it's tough and durable. It's used for quality furniture and it has an attractive grain when well finished. But disadvantage is that it's expensive and it's becoming rarer. Applications could be like building houses and boats in the past, but now it's used for high-end furniture. Mahogany has a dark reddish color and very close grain, and it cuts and polishes easily. And disadvantage is that it's expensive, but it's used for high-quality furniture, that's why it's expensive. And beech wood has a slight pink tint and it has a close grain. It's tough, durable and hard and it's smooth to finish. It's expensive and it's not resistant to moisture. And it's typically used in toys or laminated furniture and cooking implements. Then we have balsa which has a pale and white space grain due to it, due to it being a, a fast growing hardwood. It's very soft and easy to form and cut and it's lightweight. But disadvantage is that it's way too soft and weak for most products. And applications could include model making, primary school projects. Gelatong, it's, uh, it's a wood that is easy to cut and shape and it has a close and even grain. And because it's soft but it's hardwood, it is not good use for structural uses. And applications could be used for model making and vacuum forming molds, which is similar to balsa wood. Birch wood, it's easy to cut and shape. But it's, all, but it's also liable to rot and insect attacks and it's often used in veneers in furniture due to, its, due to its even grains. And ash wood, it finishes well and it is selected because it is strong and flexible but like birch wood, it is liable to rot and insect attacks and it's used in ladders, tools hand, tool handles, walking sticks and sports equipment. Then we have 7.2.2 natural timbers softwood and I've covered pine and cedar in my first topic but we'll still cover it now uh, briefly. Pine is a pale color with aesthetically pleasing green wood and it's very durable and it's easy to work with and it's cheap as it grows quickly but disadvantage should be that it can warp and crack and splinter more than some other woods and for example it's used in house constructions and furniture. For cedar it's lightweight pale color with even texture and natural the natural oils make it resistant to water and fungal growth but it's more expensive than pine wood and it's not as strong as pine and it's used in outdoor furniture and like fences, sheds and boats. Large wood is tough, durable and resistant to water and it can be used outside untreated and fades to a silvery grey color but it costs more than some other softwoods and it's used in small boats and like exterior cladding on buildings. Then we have manufactured timbers, 7.2.3 And here's plywood, it's layers of veneers glued at 90 degrees for the strength and the aesthetically pleasing outer layer And the tree trunk is sliced into thin layers called veneers and that's why it's called veneers And it's flat and structurally, uh, structurally strong and the surface looks like wood But it's expensive and the edges look rough And typically plywood are used in building and furniture that need some strength and MDF or medium density fiber is smooth, light and brown and it, it's uh, like wood dust and fibers are mixed with glue and pressed into flat sheets under extreme heat and pressure to make MDF 
and it's smooth and good for painting and staining and it absorbs moisture and it's weak compared to plywood. And applications of MDF could include cheap flat pack furniture and wall panels. Chipboard is when wood chips are mixed with glue and pressed into flat sheets similar to MDF. And it uses waste material so it is cheap to produce but there's not much structural strength especially in damp conditions and it's used in like desktops, kitchens and worktops. And then we have 7.2.4 sources and origins where natural and manufactured timbers are resourced or manufactured in their geographical or origin. And number one, alpine forests. It, uh, the woods like these woods, pine, cedar and larch come from alpine forests. And oak, beech and earth, ash and birch come from European forests. And mahogany wood comes from Amazonian forests. And different types of trees grow naturally in different parts of the world due to different climates. And in the past, this influenced which timber were used in manufacturing. But globalization means timber and goods are, uh, are able to move around the world. And most softwoods naturally grow in colder, uh, colder region. And some hardwoods grow in temperate climates such as Europe, while others grow in tropical rainforests like in Malaysia or like this band right here. Then we have 7.2.5, the physical characteristics of each timber. We have knots, which is where it marks where a branch once grew out a tr on a tree. And knots often fall out from planks as they shrink, leaving a hole like this. It is preferably to use timbers without knots unless for decorative purposes. And color. Different woods have different colors from the pale colors of pine to the rich dark reddish brown of mahogany. Trees are living organisms and their colors will vary, vary from tree to tree and within the tree itself. This means when buying a timber, it is important to, that color may vary from plank to plank. And grain structure and density. Both hardwoods and softwoods produce a new layer under their bark each year called growth rings. These are close together and further apart for softwoods and hardwoods uh, as hardwood trees grow slower. And growth, ring, growth rings only work for countries with four seasons as trees growth uh, like stops or slows down during winter. And 7.2.6 which is working properties which I've covered in topic 1, the core content, so I'll just skim through this. And strength is where it's, its ability to withstand force. Elasticity is ability to return to original shape. Plasticity is ability to permanently deform without breaking. Malleability is ability to be permanently deformed in all directions without fracture. Ductility is ability to be deformed by bending, twisting or stretching. Hardness is ability to resist deformation. Toughness is ability to withstand sudden stress or shocks. Brittleness is inabil inability to withstand sudden stress or shocks so they are like opposite. Durability is ability to withstand deterioration over time. Stability is ability to resist changes. And stiffness is ability to resist bending. Then we have 7.2.7 .7, social footprint. We have trend forecasting, impact of loggings, and ease and difficulty of recycling and disposal. For trend forecasting, it, uh, it's basically predicting possible trends in the future using data from past sales and market growth. And trend forecasters analyze the movement of the market and look for patterns in consumer behavior. And design trends include minimal design, bright and bold colors, and asymmetry. And here's like a life cycle, like a cir circular like, um, pattern. Then we have impact of loggings on community. And loggings are activities or business of felling trees and cutting and preparing the timber. And it causes lots of problems itself such as endangering animals, polluting the area and cause conflicts around the world. That's why in certain places or area, logging is banned. And since logging is banned in some, uh, and some people still proceed to cut down trees, this is called illegal logging, often run by logging communities. And the social impacts of uh, illegal logging are diverse. And illegal logging undermines the rule of law and is often associated with corruption. And this can have negative impacts on the livelihoods of local people and result in conflict, as well as the revenue of, from illegal logging may also find national and regional conflicts. Like here's a photo of like deforestation or logging. Then we have recycling and disposal. Timbers is a natural material and it will eventually biodegrade and rot away. It can be disposed by burning to create heat, which can be useful if it's well managed. And but it cannot be recycled by melting it down or remolding like plastics and metals can. And sometimes timber can be used for other things. For example, 
by cleaning it up and sewing it into smaller pieces to make like MDF or any other boards as we've seen just now. And like clean timber which means a supply of timber that is not mixed with manufactured boards or other rubbish. Composite materials are like for example chipboard and covered in plastic are much harder to dispose. Here's like a MDF or any other board and here's just a photo. And lastly we have ecological footprint, we have sustainability, deforestation and habitat destruction and loss. And sustainability of timbers is the idea that there are always trees available to use and hardwood trees take a long time to grow and so they are rarely planted. So and softwood trees grow more quickly. And some forests now are sustainably managed which means that these trees are being replanted as soon as others are cut down. So that the trees are, there's, a, there's like an always uh, an area of forest that is mature enough to be cut down. And deforestation is a global problem as trees are cut down faster than they grow. And it's a major problem for areas of developing world such as South America and West Africa. And it can cause a lot of accompanying environmental issues such as soil erosion. Because trees can absorb carbon dioxide from the air, scientists think that, that having fewer trees will make the greenhouse effect worse, which will warm the earth and affect climate and sea levels for the whole world, which is like climate change. And habitat destruction and loss, when an area of forest is destroyed, the animals that live there lose their habitat and they usually have nowhere else to go. Some well-known animals such as tigers, gorillas and orangutans and elephants are in danger due to the loss of habitat and there are hundreds of more species of animals, birds and insects that are at risk of extinction if deforestation continues, which is a very bad thing because animals and insects are important to us. Then lastly we have processing, which is a tree when a tree is cut down, it needs to be processed to make usable timbers. And the tree trunk will be sawn into planks and then dried out in the process called seasoning. And transportation is where when a tree is cut down in the forest, it must be taken out to the forest to go for processing either on lorries or sometimes being floated down a suitable river because it floats. And most transport burn fossil fuels and this increase the carbon footprint. And wastage. The trunk of the tree will be used for planks, but other parts such as the small branches and leaves that are not useful will be left to rot or all burnt. And larger branches and the waste from the trunk after cutting into useful planks may be turned into chipboard or MDF as we discussed just now. And to reduce the negative effects of like uh, timbers, you can ensure that your work areas are well ventilated and that protective equipment such as gloves and masks are used to prevent like respiratory uh, that disease or like uh, any effects. Like asthma. And lastly, pollution. Trees absorb carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and release oxygen, and trees are known as carbon sink. And when wood is burnt for firewood or to clear land, it releases carbon dioxide into the air, which, it, which further increases the greenhouse effect and worsening the climate change. And the other pollution from timber comes from transportation of it around the world, which burns fossil fuel, as we talked about in this transportation over here. And that's it for the 7.2 DC Timbers Timbers content. And I hope you guys found it useful and found it helpful. And if you did, please leave a like and subscribe and comment down below if you have any questions or criticisms. And also check out my Instagram in the description for more daily content. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this and I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, stay safe and happy learning.